Okay, you've finished the homeostasis portion. Let's do some challenge questions. Challenge question number one, parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone is released when the parathyroid glands sense low calcium in the blood. It stimulates osteoclast cells to break down bone to release more calcium, kidney cells to reabsorb more calcium into the blood and remove phosphate, and vitamin D activation so we can get more intestinal absorption of calcium. All of these changes cause an increase in calcium in the blood. Pause for a minute. Can you identify the body systems involved? Can you identify the type of regulation? Within that type of regulation, what's the sensor? What's the effector? What's the stimulus? What's the response? Can you think of any pros and cons to this system? And let's look at it more closely. So in this example, we have the body trying to keep calcium at a normal range. Calcium is very important for many of the biochemical reactions within the cells. It's also a stabilizer for membranes. It maintains bone health and does many other important functions for the body. If the parathyroid glands sense that calcium levels in the blood are too low, then they're going to release parathyroid hormone. That will cause those three changes we just talked about, osteoclast, kidney, and intestinal changes. Overall, those three changes combined lead to an increase in calcium levels in the blood. So we saw that calcium was too low, and the response was for calcium to increase. If you said negative feedback control, you are correct. This is a negative feedback type regulation. The body systems involved are the skeletal system, the renal system, and the digestive system. These three systems work together to maintain calcium levels in the body. What about pros and cons? This system is especially critical for calcium homeostasis. Calcium is critical for biochemical reactions and membrane stabilization. Drawbacks occur when this system is overactivated or activated under abnormal conditions, meaning it didn't really need to be activated. Hyper parathyroidism we'll talk about during the endocrine system. But one of the changes for hyperparathyroidism is a weakening of bones. Too much breakdown of bones in order to release calcium can cause an increase in fracture risk and brittle or weakened bones. Challenge question number two, clotting factors. Clotting factors are released in response to an injury to a blood vessel. Yes, there's many clotting factors. We're not going to get into them in this lecture. We'll get into those during hematology. When there's an injury to a blood vessel, platelets are recruited. More clotting factors are released. The more clotting factors that get released, the more platelets are recruited, the more clotting factors are released. More clotting factors being released causes more recruitment of platelets, causes more clotting factors to be released, and this does not stop until that injury to the blood vessel resolves or the broken blood vessel wall is plugged. Can you think of the body systems activated here? What would be the type of regulation we see? Any pros and cons? Pause for a minute till you get the answer. All right, if you said this was a positive feedback control, you got it. Hopefully you recognize the domino effect of more and more clotting factors and platelets being recruited to the site of injury. This involves the hematologic system and of course, the cardiovascular system in general. 
Can you think of some pros and cons? Important in clotting is preventing bleeding and plugging up those injuries to the blood vessels when they happen. It's critical for circulatory system function. But an excess of clotting can cause sluggish or high resistance blood flow. It can also cause a thrombus or embolus formation, leading to cardiovascular events like stroke, heart attack, or other blocked blood vessels. That's all for the challenge questions. Let me know if you think of other examples you'd like to share or if you have any further questions. See you soon.